Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you all had a great Thursday. Hope you are having a great work week so far. Um, in this video, we're really going to talk about the tropics. We're going to break down what it what it looks like going forward. Um, tomorrow actually marks the uh, what you would I guess say the peak season. If you're going to label one day during hurricane season, tomorrow is the actual threshold of the peak season. After tomorrow, we technically begin to slowly go back down, and um, you know peak season starts to dwindle away, if you will, and we start to uh, see less and less hurricane activity. But let me say this, um, the second half of hurricane season, especially throughout the last several years, is usually more active than the first half and more intense. And we look at last year, and that is a big, big example of how it can be. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, yes, we are going to be moving past peak season, and on in the second half of the game, if you will, um, but it's not over. Um, it really isn't. We've had some intense October storms here in the last several years. I can name a few, but uh, I think you'll all get the picture here. So keep in mind that uh, hurricane season is not over, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about a couple things in this video, what it looks like through mid to maybe late month. Take a look at model guidance and really break down some things. Right now, you have what's left of Mindy. Let me tell you, Mindy uh, turned some heads last night at the last second. It really tried to get its act together as it made landfall in the Panhandle of Florida. Um, in fact, I think there was a 57 mile per hour wind gust measured in the eye wall, if you will, of Mindy, uh, right on the outer edges of the center of circulation. So Mindy, yeah, Mindy had another 24 hours over water. That could have been a hurricane hitting Florida. Um, so thankfully that was not the case, but what's left over is moving off the coast of the southeast, likely not to develop. There's an area of interest here in the next five days we're going to talk about too. There's also a vigorous tropical wave moving off of North Africa. And there is Larry, which unfortunately looks like it's going to pretty much hit areas of Newfoundland head on and uh, the bigger city of St. John's there. So, you know... Uh, I have I've had about four or five people from the uh, from that area or Canada comment um, about that area. So um, all I can say is uh, it's going to be a quick hitting storm, but it's going to be a powerful storm. So overnight tomorrow night, it's going to make a lot of ruckus, and uh, it's going to throw some things around. Heavy rain, um, hurricane force winds briefly. But the good news is is you're probably going to go to sleep Friday night. And by the time you're waking up fr uh, Saturday morning, it's going to be on out of here. And it's actually going to turn into a raging snowstorm for Greenland as it moves way northeast um, where feet of snow are going to fall. So uh, that's what we're going to break down this video. Right now, you have a nice cold front moving through. And we're going to talk uh, briefly about that, too. So if you guys have not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I uh, like the video if you like it, and I like to mention this. Well, I, I, let me rephrase that. I don't always like to mention this, but I like to maybe one or two times a month at most. Um, if you guys, uh, there's a way to donate to my page. Uh, there's a PayPal link at the bottom. Um, all everything goes is just trying to improve my system and trying to um, basically and for my storm chasing trips. If y'all have been following my channel, I'm also a storm chaser. There's also a way to join my channel. And uh, unfortunately, my channel's not really big enough. I'm not really deep enough into it to provide really any perks. But you can, you know, donate $10 a month and join my channel. And it just, it goes to improve my setup. As you know, my um, output only goes in 720. That's going to change in the near future. But um, I don't like swiping a credit card or anything just to buy a computer. I like to save up actual money and do it the right way. So that's the plan. And that's what I can kind of continue to do. And so thank you all for the amazing support. So let's get to talking about the weather here. So uh, we look at water vapor loop. Um, this does a good job. Obviously, you see uh, Larry out there. But you see these darker colors right here. That is dry air filtering in. That is a cold front that's moving through from northwest to southeast. And it's crazy. It's timing up just like it did last week. And we're going to have a phenomenal weather weekend for everybody across the eastern U.S., Except maybe Florida, you know, just it's just this time of the year for the peninsula of Florida. It stays tropical down there all the way through about, about mid to late fall. So um, everybody in the Carolinas, Georgia, the deep south, uh, mid-Atlantic, northeast. Beautiful early fall weekend, just like last weekend. Awesome weekend for college football, outdoor activities. Um, just a great weekend. Highs in the 80s, low humidity, lows in the low 60s and upper 50s. Just an awesome weekend. So uh, definitely something to look forward to in the short term. 
um, looking at the latest um, update from the national hurricane season uh, season here we go uh, center national national okay I guess I just can't talk it's pretty late by the way I'm making this video a lot later than I normally do from the from the National Hurricane Center the latest update um, this has a 70% chance to develop the, the good thing about this is it's going to gain too much uh, northern stream here and basically it's going to get into some cooler waters and whatever it does form this is going to dissipate you got Larry which is a 90 mile per hour storm um, it's going to continue to weaken but still it's going to pick up a lot of speed and still hit Newfoundland as a hur hurricane status you got what's left of tropical depression Mindy and you have this area that now has a 40% chance to develop in the next five days. This is going to be an area to watch. Um, whether this develops or not, not sure. But one thing's for sure, it's going to bring some tropical moisture into Texas. Um, so it's going to surge a lot of moisture for you guys. So keep an eye on this. You cannot trust the Gulf of Mexico. Look at Mindy. You just can't, guys. So here you go. Latest GFS, we'll take a look at it, and there goes Larry plowing right in the Newfoundland. So you guys need to watch out. This is going to happen overnight tomorrow into Saturday morning. By the time most of you guys are waking up in the morning, it's on out of here with some breezy conditions, and you have a nice rest of your weekend, probably unfortunately cleaning up and stuff. But um, luckily, this is not going to hang around. It picks up a lot of speed as it interacts with the jet. Um, but moving forward here, this is that tropical moisture we're talking about, and we'll get a little bit closer look at it here in a second. But just some tropical moisture trying to surge into, well, I'm sorry, this is the wrong system to speed up. Here we go. Moving forward here, um, you just have to watch this area. I'm getting all tongue-tied -tied here with my timing here. But uh, this could really start to form as early as late this week, and some tropical moisture begins to surge into the western areas of Gulf of Mexico. This could quickly develop into something, but we're going to watch this right now. It doesn't look that bad. At the same time, you have a tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa ne early next week. Um, there's not much support of any kind of major intensity. I will mention there's another area off the coast of the southeast, so there's a lot of small areas, but nothing looks super threatening at all. But almost all model guidance right here, and I don't have all the models pulled up, shows some kind of favored development right here off the southeast coast. Um, obviously, you have the Gulf Stream that moves through here, so you have to watch anything that tries to develop right there. Um, and then pops a low off right here around this time next week. And uh, you have to watch for some tropical mischief for the Carolinas maybe next weekend. Uh, not 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 even a possibility at this point we need a little bit more model guidance to come to come into friction for this but then that moves through and then we get pretty far out and it's hard to really it's hard to really pay any of this stuff really far out any attention now you look at the GEFS ensembles here um, let's get rid of this add in motion over here and moving forward here um, almost all map members have it hit Newfoundland now at the same time you have a little bit of um, some love showing up here off North Africa of a signal for something. You have a little bit of that signal showing up in the Western Gulf of Mexico for some kind of tropical development. But, you know, even this, it starts gaining some, you know, it starts, it looks like you might have a ridge of high pressure setting up here. But even this area right here, as we're getting to late next week, none of these look really strong. You know, all these numbers right here are potential low pressures on average. But nothing really looks intimidating, scary, or anything. Now, you start to look off the coast of the southeast, and then you're starting to see some, some favored areas potentially for some tropical development as we get into next weekend. Um, and then some larger members begin to show up. But this is over 10 days out, so it's really hard to get any, any crazy about this right here. But this is still in September. September is the one of the most active months for hurricane season, August, September, and early October. So, um, you know, maybe maybe mid to late month is when we really need to start paying attention to the tropics again. We're just, even though we just had Mindy, right now we're just not in a very favored setup. Um, ridging of high pressure right now is um, not favorable for anything clearing across the tropical Atlantic and slamming into the U.S., which is good, by the way. That's good news because we're in the climate we're in the climate peak right now for hurricane season. So if you had some kind of huge Atlantic ridge over this area right now with low pressures coming off um, 
North Africa, they would be heading right towards the U.S. and the uh, Caribbean islands, which would not be good. You look at the latest European model, check it out. It has Larry plowing right into Newfoundland. I mean, uh, it's been showing this for about two or three days now, so it looks likely to happen. At the same time, you have that area that has a 70% chance to develop. Um, looking like it's going to develop, but then it f fizzles out at the same time that's happening around early next week you have a huge plume of tropical moisture moving to texas and the potential for maybe a tropical depression weak tropical storm making landfall somewhere in the coastal areas of texas see god watch out that watch out for that sorry guys it's really late and my uh throat's getting really dry here um and but as you're getting into late next week same thing with the GFS shows. You start to see these tropical waves coming off the coast of North Africa. And we have to watch these. You know, there's there's nothing crazy popping up right now. But for instance, then this one 10 days out, you have to watch this one. Will it try to develop into something? And then you have that area of interest right here off the southeast coast the GFS was showing. Could that develop into something? So like I've said in the video a couple times, there's nothing really threatening out there. But there's a, a quite a few small areas to pay attention to. Um, this is the basically the um, European ensembles here, basically the SpaghettiO showing us potential low pressures here in circle form. And you look right here in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, see all them circles. That's a that's an okay signal for some kind of tropical development as we're getting into next week. But other than that, you get a little bit of signal off the east coast. Um, but if even if you get in the long range, even any of these storms are really developed. I'd tell you what, this is a good sign seeing this. Um, that you don't see any crazy, um, honestly, you don't see any crazy runs right here on the ensemble showing any kind of real threatening scenarios. So, honestly, it looks to remain quiet. The weather looks to remain quiet. Um, not a whole lot going on here. Um, I will give you a closer look at this system in the Gulf moving forward. And uh, here it goes. And really, you know, you getting into the late weekend to early next week, it just shows a plume of tropical moisture really moving into maybe areas of Texas, maybe even Louisiana. But even the operational GFS doesn't really show any big time development or anything. Um, I will take a look at Larry really quick. And then you see Larry really hitting Newfoundland. Like I said, this is overnight tomorrow into Saturday morning. It's going to hit. You're starting going to start to see the effects as early as Friday afternoon. It's going to move through, and then by the time a lot of you guys wake up Saturday morning, I mean, it's on out of here and becoming a raging snowstorm for Greenland. This is a huge snowstorm for Greenland. It's crazy that basically this is tropical snow, if you will. So I can't imagine um, anybody that lives up there. I mean, they're going to get blasted by a major storm here. And um, so basically, you guys in Newfoundland, the hurricane's basically going to hit you guys very quickly. Here's wind speeds. That's going to be brief tropical storm to hurricane force winds. That's anywhere from 40 to 60 to 70 mile per hour winds. It moves through quick, going to howl overnight, and then this thing turns into a raging snowstorm and another day for Greenland. So that's how dynamic this system is. So um, really looking forward here, guys. It, um, you know, there's, there's not really a big... It looks... It doesn't look bad at all to me, honestly. I think we really need to watch this system at the end of the next end of, end of this weekend, which is here in a few days, um, to see if this thing can develop. If this thing can scoot more so over water, then you could have some trouble here. But right now, this looks like at most a tropical storm hitting um, areas of Texas. But outside of that, nothing really scary showing up in the long mid to long term. Um, as we get into the brute kind of the um, the the main section of hurricane season, if you will, so that's good news. You know, you need to look at the steering patterns out there as far as uh, where these systems going to go. If there's anything that does form, I mean, there is some Atlantic ridging. You see the reds and the dark reds showing up in the H. That's basically ridging in place, but there's no strong ridging showing up. Now, one thing I do worry about as it's, as we get a little bit longer and long range. This kind of ridge showing up here. If anything develops, it scoots under here, and then it tries to curl and hit the southeast. But that's so far out that it's hard to, I mean, it's hard to take it super serious. So I think if we're going to see any more tropical activity, which we will, I think it's going to be a little bit later this month. So right now, just enjoy the break and uh, really think things are going to pick back up again. So 
that's all I got. Sorry about the low energy, guys. I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm very tired, <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I don't know if I've talked to about my routine before, but I, uh, I normally go to bed about eight thirty, and then I'm up at four thirty in the morning. That's just, that's just my routine. I don't like sleeping in. I usually have like a morning routine where I read, work out, and just um, have some alone time. So it definitely helps me get going in the mornings. There, but and 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 you know. That's why at night I go to sleep so early. So um, I'm a big I'm big on getting at least eight hours of sleep. That's very important to me. So um, thank you all for tuning in, anyways, and uh, appreciate y'all's amazing support. And I hope y'all have a great rest of your night.